All right. Hello. It looks like we've got some people already on the webinar. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to give everybody another minute or so to get logged in. Um, if you can hear me and see my screen, um, I would really appreciate it if you could just let me know in the chat so that I know that everybody can see me and hear me. Awesome. Thank you, Lucille, Courtney, everybody. Thank you so much. All right, I'm gonna just put myself on mute for another second um, and then we'll get started right at the top of the hour. So feel free to kick back and relax um, and I will be uh, starting the webinar at 3 p.m. Eastern time on the dot. All right, hello everyone, and thanks for joining me today for our webinar that is all about social media and Giving Tuesday. Uh, my name is Linda Gerhardt, and I am the Senior Community Engagement Manager at, here at Mighty Cause. Um, one of the jobs that I'm lucky enough to have here at Mighty Cause is managing our marketing, uh, which includes our social media. And before I started working here, I've managed social media for small nonprofits and helped with large nonprofits. Um, so hopefully I can use that experience to bring you some useful information about how your nonprofit can leverage social media for Giving Tuesday. Here is a quick look at today's agenda. Um, we're just going to quickly go through why social media is so important for Giving Tuesday. Um, and then we're going to talk about content planning and creating a social media plan. Um, and then we'll talk through some of the challenges nonprofits face trying to reach supporters on social media because that's um, obviously a concern a lot of nonprofits have. Um, and then we're going to go into tips and best practices for all of the platforms that you will most likely be using for your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, we will make some time for questions at the end. So if you think of something um, that you'd like to ask or get more information about while I'm presenting, you can feel free to use the Q&A box for that. And also please feel free to interact with each other in the chat. Um, you know, it's a, an interactive webinar as, as much as it can be. So please feel free to use that chat. Um, and just to let everybody know, we are recording this webinar. So you'll have access to uh, both the recording and the slides once we're done. Uh, so before we dive in, I wanted to make sure that everybody on this webinar understands what Mighty Cause is and what it's all about, um, since we definitely have a few folks who are not currently registered for Mighty Cause um, on this webinar. Mighty Cause is a nonprofit fundraising platform that has been around since 2006. Uh, we actually used to be called Razoo, but we rebranded as Mighty Cause, um, which makes us one of the most experienced fundraising platforms in the industry. Um, we provide an all-in-one solution for all of your small nonprofits fundraising needs. Um, and some of our key product offerings are peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, team and event fundraising, embeddable donation tools like our widgets and custom donation pages, and even a CRM tool called supporters. Uh, we have a lot to offer here at Mighty Cause and just a few of the benefits uh, for signing up for Mighty Cause are listed on this slide. Uh, we do provide a full fundraising suite that is built for nonprofits, specifically with the small nonprofit in mind. Um, we provide secure and reliable donation processing, including recurring donations so that you can grow your nonprofit and build a base of reliable revenue. Um, we have the best peer-to-peer uh, -peer tools in the industry. And we also have some really exciting software integrations with Salesforce, Constant Contact, MailChimp, Eventbrite, and so on, so that you don't have to worry about data isolation. We really are aiming to be an all-in-one tool. Um, we have comprehensive reporting, analytics, and we're really just designed 
to make fundraising easy and accessible for nonprofits of all sizes. Um, and the cool thing about signing up for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause is that it A, sets you up on the platform so you can fundraise year round. And it also gives you a free preview of our essentials plan so that you can make the most of these tools for your Giving Tuesday campaign. And you can also take them for a test drive if you're not currently an essentials subscriber. Um, we do offer uh, free demos with our staff and they're usually one-to-one. -one. So if you'd like to learn more about what Mighty Cause has to offer and some of the subscription plans that we have available, um, you can use the link that's on the slide, mightycause.com slash contact us to set up a personal demo with one of our representatives. And with that out of the way, uh, let's dive into social media and why it is connected to Giving Tuesday. So just so we're all on the same page, I want to get into the details of Giving Tuesday. There is a larger Giving Tuesday event or movement, um, and no one really owns that. There's a Giving Tuesday organization. Uh, we were lucky enough to have one of their uh, staff members on a recent webinar of ours called givingtuesday.org. Um, and nonprofits and donors all over the globe get engaged in Giving Tuesday. Um, and they do it in a lot of different ways. Some join an existing event like uh, Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause, and some just fundraise on their own. Um, it's one of the biggest fundraising days of the year in terms of volume and the amount that's raised. Um, the top day, by the way, is December 31st. Um, Giving Tuesday is always the Tuesday after United States Thanksgiving, and this year it actually falls on November 30th. Um, Mighty Cause hosts our own Giving Tuesday event on our platform to help the nonprofits using Mighty Cause fundraise and win some prizes. Um, this year, we've got more than $5,000 to give away throughout the day. Um, so there are benefits to participating on Mighty Cause. Um, and we do also have some other regional events that are happening on Mighty Cause, uh, such as Georgia Gives, Richland Gives. So if you are here and you're part of one of those events, um, just know that I am talking about the Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause event in most cases, but all of the information will also be applicable for your events if you are here from another giving event that happens on Giving Tuesday. Um, our event on Mighty Cause is midnight Eastern time to midnight Pacific time. So it's actually a 27 hour event so that nobody gets any prize advantages because they're in a particular time zone. Um, we provide training just like this webinar leading up to the event, along with a toolkit that you can use to amplify your fundraising and find the right strategy for your nonprofit. You do have to register for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause. And as I mentioned before, if you're not already on Mighty Cause, um, registering for Giving Tuesday is really a two birds, one stone activity. Registering will get you set up on the platform so that you can fundraise year round, you can get yourself set up for end of year as well. Um, registration is open now. So if you have not already uh, registered for Giving Tuesday, please feel free to open up a tab on your browser and register while I'm talking. I promise it won't hurt my feelings. And the form is really short, so you can come back to the webinar whenever you're done. So Giving Tuesday, the broader event, is actually created for the specific purpose of inspiring and promoting philanthropy and social good in the social media age. So even though you will use all sorts of tools to connect with your donors on Giving Tuesday, including email and personal outreach, um, social media is really where it all goes down on Giving Tuesday. The actual name of the event, Giving Tuesday, is a hashtag, um, even though people don't always use it that way, but it is intended to be a hashtag. So it's literally designed to create engagement on social media. Um, and really, since Facebook started teaming up with big partners like the Gates Foundation and PayPal, Facebook itself um, has become really the epicenter of a lot of Giving Tuesday activities. With them giving millions of dollars away, that's usually gone in minutes. Um, and just as a bit of a disclaimer, we really won't be talking about the fundraising on Facebook using their tools for this webinar, because obviously we'd like you to utilize Mighty Cause and join our event. Um, and the benefit to participating on Mighty Cause is even though we don't have quite as much in prizes in terms of cash, it's a much smaller pool of nonprofits and we schedule them throughout the day. So there's not that wild early morning grab for prizes. Um, we have small and mid-sized nonprofits primarily on our platform. Um, and we have a few prizes that are specifically for nonprofits 
nonprofits that have smaller budgets. So we're really designing our event to give you lots of opportunities to win no matter your size. Unfortunately, Facebook gives away a lot of money on Giving Tuesday every year, but it usually goes to larger nonprofits who have a larger staff and more capacity to sort of game the system and get those matching funds. Um, but what we will be focusing on, even though we aren't going to go into Facebook's fundraising tools in specific terms, is um, on Facebook and other social media platforms and how you can utilize those to reach your, your audience and connect with donors on Giving Tuesday. All right, so before we start getting into the nitty gritty of each platform, I really wanted to talk through what goes into creating content for social media and how you can put together a solid social media plan. Um, because you know the old saying, failure to plan is planning to fail. So content is a word that you'll hear a lot, especially relating to social media. And I think I've already said it a few times on this webinar, uh, but if you're not a marketer by trade and you're trying to figure all of this out at a small nonprofit where you wear a lot of hats, that might sound like a very maddeningly vague term. So what is content? Um, content is defined as creative material that a person or a brand uses to connect and engage with an audience on social media, usually with the goal of inspiring them to take some sort of action. So it's really an umbrella term for a lot of different things that you might post on social media, such as videos, images, graphics and infographics, GIFs, memes, live streams, AMA or Ask Me Anything sessions, giveaways, and even blog posts and landing pages um, and any other material that is used for the specific purpose of engaging your audience on social media. So I wanted to start there um, and really talk about what content is because it's become kind of this piece of jargon, but really it just is an umbrella term for the creative pieces that go into reaching your audience on social media. So that's what content is, but what is the purpose of content? Why do we talk about it so much? Um, what is it and why is it so important? Um, basically, content is there to serve a few key goals. As a brand, which your nonprofit is, um, you're using social media to get specific reactions from users and to reach new people. So content simply exists to support these goals. Um, the primary role of, of content is entertainment. Um, that's largely, largely what people use it for and providing entertaining content is the primary way to get and keep followers as well as inspire them to take action and when I say entertainment I don't necessarily mean that it has to be funny or lighthearted. it can be serious but when I say entertainment I mean it engages them they watch it they engage they want to um, have it in their feed they're interested in it and that's what entertainment does in terms of content um, content also serves the purpose of grabbing users attention um, when you're competing against people's short attention spans online and the way all of us scroll through social media without really absorbing anything that we're reading, um, you need good content to grab their attention and get them to stop scrolling and look at what you're saying to them. Um, education is also a really huge piece of what social media can do for nonprofits. It's a very effective way to teach the public about the issues your organization is tackling um, and what you do as an organization, why your work is important. Um, so education Education is a really important piece of social media content for most nonprofits. Um, engagement is a word that you'll hear a lot related to social media. I think I've used it at least 20 times so far. And all that really means is getting your audience to interact with your brand and with your posts, with your content. Um, and by commenting, liking, sharing posts, tagging their friends to pull new people in, that's all considered engaging. Um, this is uh, really the most important thing that social media content does and we're going to talk about why in just a little bit but you're also using content to reach followers and find new followers on social media. And finally, for a brand, the end goal of most content is a conversion, um, which is basically a fancy way of saying that the user took an action that you wanted them to take um, on social media. That definitely means going to a link and making a donation. So that is what's considered a conversion. And that's usually the end of the role of content is you got them to convert and take whatever action you were aiming to get them to take. 
So with all of that in mind, it's important to start planning your content by defining your goals and understanding what you want content to actually do for your nonprofit. Um, again, content is really just there to support your goals. It's not, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's there to support you. So that's where it really needs to start if you want to have uh, successful and effective social media content. You need to really think about what you want it to do. Um, when a nonprofit is not thinking about the goals of their social media posts and their content, that's often when you'll see nonprofits kind of just jumping on trends here and there and sort of chasing their tails with their posts um, because they don't have a specific goal in mind except posting on social media. So really, you want to define your goals. And thankfully for Giving Tuesday, you have some pretty simple built-in goals. You want people to go to a specific link like your Mighty Cause page and make a donation. So each piece of content should be built with that in mind to produce that specific outcome. And once you have your goals in place, you can actually plot out the content that you'll need specifically. What are your needs and who will create it? Uh, what format does it need to be in? Especially if you're working with, say, a volunteer graphic designer, you really need to hone in on what kind of content you want them to produce, what you want it to look like, what size it needs to be, and so on. Um, and then you'll need to set about gathering the content together. And it's always good to start with a shared folder or drive with some images, some video clips, uh, logos, and so on that will be useful for your giving to Tuesday campaign. Some things you'll definitely want to add to your list of content are videos. I really cannot recommend creating a campaign video enough. It goes a long way on social media. You can reuse it over and over again. And you can also use it in multiple ways leading up to your campaign. You can post it on social media, um, but you can also post it to your Mighty Cause page. You can send a link to it in emails. Unfortunately, you can't embed video in emails very easily, um, but there's a lot of ways you can use a campaign video. So even though it is a bit of an investment in terms of time, and effort, it usually pays off. Um, we did do an entire webinar about creating a campaign video that my colleague Lisa hosted. So if you missed that one and you want to learn more about creating a campaign video, I really recommend checking out our nonprofit toolkit on the Giving Tuesday site um, and watching that, that webinar. It was a really great webinar. Um, you'll want social media images and graphics. Um, what you do is up to you. Uh, there's a lot of license for creativity, but things like Giving Tuesday avatars, or logos and banner images are really great. And you can actually reuse, reuse those things on Mighty Cause. Um, shareable images and things like infographics are really great. Um, you'll want photos. Photos are going to be a key part of social media. And we're going to talk about why in just a moment. Um, so as part of the planning process, it's really helpful to get together a library of images that are related to however you're fundraising, if your campaign has a theme, um, you know, getting a folder or a drive together where people can easily access access those and you have everything in one place, that's super helpful. Um, so this isn't an extensive list and we're going to talk more about what kind of content works on each specific platform, but this is just the kind of stuff you want to think about when you're plotting out your social media campaign. Um, Mighty Cause's users are typically on the smaller side in terms of budget, um, so they don't usually have entire departments that are dedicated to graphic design or social media marketing. They usually have maybe one person who's handling it or a couple of people handling it, and sometimes even just volunteers. So I really wanted to talk about building these types of content pieces on a budget because this can all sound like a lot. It can feel really intimidating if your budget is zero or if you're just very small and struggle with capacity. Um, so the biggest tip here that I have is to use what you've got. Um, you don't need special equipment or tools or someone to do a full-blown photo shoot at your facilities for Giving Tuesday. You can use an iPhone and existing images. Um, and smartphone cameras are actually really excellent cameras. So don't think that you need anything more than what you've already got in your own pocket. Um, and you also probably have some staff members and volunteers who have really great photos and videos on their phones as well. So make sure that you're um, using the resources that you already have. Um, secondly, you want to use free tools. Um, I love Canva. Canva is really awesome for building content. Um, they have social media post templates. Um, you can use content Canva rather to build videos. And honestly, I love Canva. I use it all the time. I'm not affiliated with them. I just love them. And if you are not on the Canva train, I really recommend going to Canva and you can actually set up a free nonprofit account, which is super useful if you don't have much of a budget for this. Um, it really makes graphic design as simple as dragging and dropping. Um, so I highly recommend checking out Canva. 
I guarantee you'll use it constantly. Um, volunteers are an important resource. Um, you may have some people in your volunteer base who are videographers, editors, uh, Photoshop whizzes, and even professional social media managers who can help you with some of this uh, the strategy and the actual posting. Um, so don't be afraid to get your volunteers involved and ask them to help. Um, and remember that all of the money in the world can't make content good. It's really about creativity and knowing your audience and knowing what you're trying to say. So don't feel defeated or intimidated if you're small. You can absolutely kill it on social media on Giving Tuesday, even if you have a $0 budget. And finally, after all of this, you wanna just put your social media plan together. Um, I really recommend uh, writing things down so you know exactly what you did this year uh, when you're looking at uh, your campaign in the next year, you know exactly what you did and how it worked. So first you wanna define your roles, who is doing what. Um, and one of the things that I certainly recommend doing for, uh, for Giving Tuesday is uh, assigning somebody to be a social media manager. So you may already have somebody on staff who plays that role, in which case this is a a super easy thing to do. Um, if not, you may need to appoint a social media manager. Um, and that is somebody who's really available to interact and monitor posts and comments um, and interact with commenters and really take ownership of each post and monitoring your social media presence on Giving Tuesday. Um, you'll also want to think about your cornerstone content, um, which is you know, the centerpieces of your campaign, often that's a video, um, but it can include a variety of content, sort of the pillars of your content strategy and what you plan to actually post on social media. And you'll wanna build your plan around those pieces. Um, and this is basically uh, something that I recommend doing and putting together in either a task manager or a spreadsheet and kind of breaking it up so that you can identify those cornerstone content pieces and set a deadline for getting them done, and you have the requirements and what you need written down in one place. Um, you'll also want to set your goals because as we discussed, good social media content has a goal in mind, and then set your metrics to define your success. So if you don't define how you're going to measure success, number one, you're going to have a hard time actually building the content, and you're not really going to know how successful it was. Um, and then build a timeline. We actually have one of those available to you on our uh, Giving Tuesday uh, nonprofit tool toolkit, but you can also build a plan that's specifically for social media, what you're going to post, where you're posting it, and when you're posting it. Um, and then when you have the pieces together and you know what you're doing, you can actually start executing and scheduling posts. Okay, so now I really wanted to talk through some of the pain points with social media um, and an issue that has been in the news a lot this year, which is uh, social media algorithms. So once upon a time, social media posts were actually chronological, which seems like a million years ago, but they were, and that meant that users could see things in the order that they were posted. So when you posted, you had to worry a lot about time. Uh, and I get asked a lot, uh, what is the best time to post? And the thing is, an algorithm kind of ruins the idea of a good time to post because it depends and people are not going to see your content at, at the same time that you post it necessarily. Um, but as social media grew, people uh, followed more accounts. A lot of people have hundreds of Facebook friends and they follow hundreds of, hundreds of brand accounts. Um, and there was just this vast amount of content and it didn't make sense to have everything post chronologically anymore because it was just way too much. So platforms started to curate the content that they showed users um, and they use an algorithm for that. Social media algorithms are a formula that sorts and curates content for each user and they show users content based on a few different factors like their behavior, whether they have interacted with your account or similar accounts in the past. Um, and algorithms will also recommend content to users based on their behavior and their preferences, and that is called content surfacing. Um, the important thing to know is that even though an algorithm is a piece of math, um, they are not neutral because they're created by the platforms. The platforms are the ones calling the shots. So the algorithm essentially serves the user by showing them things that they're most like, more likely to be interested in and enjoy seeing, um, and also the goals of the specific platform. And their goal is always to keep users within the app. 
there are a few key things that every social media platform looks for in its algorithm, which is important to keep in mind when you're building your plan and your content. Um, engagement is really king. Um, as I talked about, that's likes, comments, shares, and so on. Um, and that means that your content is much more likely to be seen if people are already engaging it, which seems like a little bit of a catch-22, but engagement is really what they're looking for from brand posts and brand pages, they want to show users content that people are already showing an interest in. Um, so engagement is honestly the primary thing that you want your content to do. Um, relationships are also really important, particularly on Facebook. They've been em emphasizing this for a couple of years now. So for instance, if someone's friend likes your content or is commenting on your Facebook posts, Facebook may decide to recommend your posts to them. Um, video is also the reigning con type of content for nearly every platform. The algorithms uh, prefer it because it keeps people in the app. It keeps them watching. Um, it keeps them from scrolling. And it's also looking for interaction, which is users interacting with each other and also with your nonprofit or your brand within the comments. They really want people to stay within the app and interactions are the best way to keep them there and also bring them back. So we do a, a webinar similar to this one pretty much every year for Giving Tuesday. The content is different, but we always do a social media webinar. And one of the most common things that people want to know is, are there any ways to sort of outsmart or hack the algorithm on social media? And honestly, the answer to that is no. Um, anyone who promises you algorithm hacks is usually selling you something, and they're usually just selling you the exact information that I'm giving you here, which is what the algorithms are looking for. Um, really, the algorithm makes it so that every user's feed is customized for them based on tons of factors. Social media platforms have a ton of data about each of its users. So all you can really do is try to understand what the platforms are looking for and work with that and post engaging content. Um, that said, the only real way to quote unquote hack the algorithm is to pay for advertising. So for the past five years or more, um, social media algorithms have really made it hard for brands uh, like your nonprofit to be seen on social media. Um, organic reach, which just means unpaid reach, is a lot harder for businesses and nonprofits. You're not imagining it. Your reach and your ability to get in people's feeds and get their eyes on your posts has been going down. Um, and the reason for this is the fact that social media apps are free to users. They're free to your brand and your nonprofit. And they make their money through advertising. Um, you're not going to pay for a Facebook post um, to boost a post if they're already giving you reach that you want for free. So they are pushing brands to pony up some cash for advertising. That's how they make their money as companies. And so all of this makes two things a little bit unavoidable if you really wanna come in strong on social media on Giving Tuesday. Um, number one, you may need to budget for advertising and boosted posts. And number two, you'll really need to understand what the apps are looking for so that you can work with their algorithm and increase your reach as much as possible. So paying is absolutely not required. You don't have to. If you don't have the budget, you don't have to pay for any advertising whatsoever, but it really will help you if you can budget a little bit of money for it. And the good thing about social media advertising is that a little bit goes a long way. A $100 boosted post can actually do a lot for you. So you really don't need a huge budget to make a huge difference. Um, even $20, if that's all you have, can really go a long way if you're boosting your key content. Content. Um, but if you're paying, just make sure that you're targeting your ads properly. Um, I have had nonprofits ask me why their boosted posts aren't looking, aren't working for them. And usually what's happening is they haven't targeted their ads well. So it's just kind of blasting out to random people and not the audience that they were looking for. So when in doubt, just pay to boost your posts to your followers because you may have 5,000 followers on Facebook those 5,000 people are not going to see your posts. So by boosting your posts and sending it to your followers, you're doing uh, you know, good targeting. You're targeting an audience that is interested in your content. They've liked your page or liked your account. Um, so if you don't know what else to do and you don't want to spend a ton of time in the weeds with targeting on social media, just target, target your existing followers. 
And I will mention that just because you pay doesn't guarantee that your post is going to be successful. You'll also want to make sure that you're getting as much organic traction as you possibly can and that your content is optimized for the platform that you're using. So you want to advertise, but you also want to make sure that your content is good. So that's why you really want to try to invest in your uh, cornerstone content, the key pieces of content you're sharing. Um, so there are some ways that you can actually boost your reach. And again, this is not hacking the algorithm. It's really just working with uh, what's already there. So one thing that you can do is ask your staff and your volunteers to get involved uh, by sharing your post, by liking your post, by engaging with it, leaving a comment. Um, these are really easy, free things for them to do. They're on social media. Pretty much everybody is. And it's a really easy ask. Say, hey, we've got our campaign video up going, a campaign video going up on social media today can you guys go to the post and like that post and comment it comment on it and share it that's a really easy thing for your staff and volunteers to do um, asking your followers to turn on post notifications for your accounts leading up to giving tuesday is a really good strategy because that guarantees if they have proactively gone to your account and turned on notifications they are going to get a notification when you make a post and you couldn't ask for anything better than that so that's something you can ask your staff to do um, you can also just post a tutorial about how to do that on your social media accounts. That's something that's really easy. Um, and it really makes sure that the people who want your, your content, they want to interact with your nonprofit, they're actually getting the posts that you're, you're putting all of this time and effort into. Um, one thing that I really can't recommend enough is making sure that you don't post and run. Uh, you want to be responsive to people. You want to respond to comments. You want to have conversations because as I mentioned, this is something that social media algorithms are looking for. And that's going to ensure that your posts are seen by more people because the app or the platform is seeing that, oh, people are interacting with this post. So people like it and we should show it to more people who like this brand or like businesses or pages like this brand. Um, and really, again, the key here, the only hack that I can recommend is uh, focusing your energy on high quality content. If your content is good, in most cases, it will work and people will interact with it. So don't focus on trying to find a way around the algorithm or to game the system. Really just think about your content and make sure that you are optimizing everything to achieve the goals that you've set for yourself on social media. Um, so if you invest your time and energy into making sure that your content is as good as it can be on whatever budget with whatever capacity you have, that's really the best investment you can make. All right, so now with all of that background stuff out of the way, I wanted to get into uh, tips and best practices for each of the platforms. Um, just so in general, before we get into each individual platform, there are some general best practices that you'll want to follow on social media. Um, the most obvious one being that you should use the Giving Tuesday hashtag and be part of the broader conversation on social media about Giving Tuesday. Um, and this will also make it more likely that people will see your content because if they're interacting with other Giving Tuesday posts, that con content surfacing technology is going to work in your favor as well. Um, including a call to action or a CTA is really important. Um, some Sometimes nonprofits tend to do this on social media um, and they kind of just post content without really an action item, a call to action. So you want to make sure that you're telling people what you want from them, that you want them to donate, you want them to go to this link, um, and really making sure that that is clear in your post and that you give them a way to do that. So if you want them to donate, provide them with a link to make sure that people can get there. Um, if you're talking about another organization or a company or you're working with you know, a community partner or something like that, uh, tag them in the post because that gets uh, you know, engagement and interaction up and so that is something that the algorithms love to see. Um, schedule as much as you can ahead of time, especially your cornerstone content, what you're building your uh, strategy around, and really just save any energy that you have for live posting, for time-sensitive news like, hey, we won a prize, or there's a prize that we're trying to win coming up soon. So saving your energy for that as 
well as interacting in comments for the day of. So definitely do whatever you can to get yourself organized before the day of so that you don't end up making any mistakes like posting things with typos or forgetting to add a link. Um, and then really you want to talk with your audience and not at them. The content that tends to work on social media is not designed to talk at people, but rather start a conversation with them. And the more you can really focus on starting conversations, the better your content will be and the better result you'll get. Um, so one thing I did want to mention is that you can actually adjust your social sharing settings on Mighty Cause. So um, before you get going for your Giving Tuesday campaign, uh, just take a look at your social sharing settings um, in your dashboard. It's under general settings um, and you want to, you can actually optimize it by putting your own image there. So if you share your link on Facebook or Twitter and the card looks a little funny, the little link preview that they have, you can update that so that it is optimal for that social media platform. You can can also tag your own Twitter account um, so that you'll get notified when somebody shares a post or it sends people to your page. Um, and you can also add a custom link description. So it's, it's going to scrape your page essentially to get a summary of what your page is all about. But you can actually customize that so that it looks as best as it can on social media. So uh, before you get started on anything else, take a look at your settings and make sure that your social sharing settings are good to go for Giving Tuesday this year. Um, so one thing that you want to consider uh, is key performance indicators or KPIs. So these are the things that I'm talking about when I'm talking about content that works. It will give you these things. So for instance, reach. Um, that is how many people are viewing your content. Um, like I said, you can have a ton of social media followers, but not all of those followers are going to see your content because of the algorithms in place. So uh, you want to Keep in mind your reach and have things that are designed to uh, give you reach. Um, and you can also hear this called impressions. Basically, that is how many times your post has appeared in somebody else's feed. Um, engagement, as I mentioned, likes, comments, clicks, and shares. And then conversions, the number of people who take a desired action on a post. And in this case, you're probably always going to want them to uh, make a, a donation at a link that you've provided. So Facebook. Um, <clears throat> Really, this is a place where you want to try to budget money because there's a lot of stuff on Facebook on Giving Tuesday. It is a crowded playing field. So if you can pay a little bit to boost your key pieces of content and target it well, that will work in your favor. Um, photos and videos uh, receive much higher engagement rates. They tend to do better. Um, and that has been the case on Facebook for a really long time. So focusing on images and videos that you can share is preferable to text posts or even just link posts. Um, this is kind of new for Facebook, but they've been really focusing on inspirational and uplifting content. Um, and that's in reaction to the fact that they've been accused of being rather divisive with people. So they really are uh, kind of boosting content that is feel good content. Um, you may not always be able to provide that, but as nonprofits, you're very well set up to be a place of hope and tell these stories that are engaging and inspirational and uplifting and really connect with your supporters. And Facebook is actually looking for that right now because it wants to downplay the amount of uh, divisive content that exists on its platform. Um, and then things that are really successful tend to be posts that that ask people to interact. So that used to be considered clickbait and we definitely don't recommend doing anything like that. But asking questions and talking to your audience um, is a really great way to get your posts seen because I, I know I on my Facebook page see tons of posts that ask questions that my relatives and former colleagues and friends interact with. So that is a really great way to increase your reach and do well on social media. Obviously you just wanna be judicious about it and make sure that if you're asking a question, it is meaningful and it's related to your organization's mission and your goals. Um, so in terms of Facebook engagement, um, one thing that you may want to consider and I highly recommend is doing a live stream on Giving Tuesday. Um, some nonprofits may do uh, several of them. Uh, so that's something that you can consider on Giving Tuesday. Um, live content does well and a lot of your followers may actually receive a push notification letting them know that you have gone live. Um, I believe on Facebook they have to intentionally disable that if they don't want to receive those notifications. So that definitely works in your favor if you do 
a live stream. Um, using your stories um, on Facebook is really helpful and it kind of pushes you to the front of the line um, because stories are chronological. There's still a little bit of algorithm at play. So if, so nobody, if somebody doesn't really interact with your brand very much, they may not see your story ahead of any other brand's stories or any friend's stories. Um, but stories are a really great tool that you can use to get people's eyes on your posts. Um, and that is kind of uh, the same idea as Snapchat. Uh, Facebook kind of uh, took this the technology from Snapchat and created their own version of it, and that is stories. So using your stories is a really good idea on Giving Tuesday. Um, and then finding creative ways to get people commenting, um, asking for opinions, asking to learn more about them. Um, those are things that are really helpful for engagement in this day and age. You see a lot of that, and the reason that it's it's so common and you see it so often on Facebook is because it really does work. Um, people really want to talk about themselves and share their thoughts and ideas. Um, obviously, you want to do your best to keep it positive. Um, so I've seen things like um, animal shelters and rescues um, asking, you know, what breed is this dog? That can be something that's really fun and boosts your engagement. And if you can tie it to your Giving Tuesday campaign, that sort of thing um, is really, really helpful at getting the engagement that you're looking for so that people see your post. So Instagram is something that nonprofits um, really, <laughs> they couldn't figure out how to use for a while, but it's really changed a lot in the past year or so. And so now it's kind of set up perfectly for nonprofit content. Um, on Instagram, one thing that I highly recommend is using Canva's templates. Canva, again, I have no affiliation with them, but they have really beautiful um, Instagram post templates as well as Instagram story templates. And that can really give you ideas for posts that might work. Um, and you really just go in, you pick a template and you customize it. You can add your logo, add your own photos. Um, there's an example of what a Canva template looks like on a slide. And it's already on the slide here and it's already optimized for social media. So um, if you can make use of Canva, I highly recommend it. They have a lot of really great templates that make things much easier for you. You don't have to start from scratch. Um, carousel posts uh, really do well on social on Instagram in particular. And that's kind of a trend that has, has taken off since 20 20, there were a lot of accounts that were really focused on education and sharing uh, information about issues. And that is um, a really great way to get people engaged because if you have a strong first slide and it's a topic that they are interested in, they're going to flip through it and see the other uh, images that you've uploaded and that is engagement. So um, that can be a really helpful way to get people engaged with your brand on Instagram. Instagram. Um, with Facebook, uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, their Instagram is owned by Facebook. So you also want to use stories. And the cool thing about Instagram is that a lot of users don't even look at their feed anymore and what people are posting on their grid. Um, like the actual posts that you do, they exclusively watch stories, which is kind of an interesting thing about Instagram. So that can really be as simple as sharing your own post to your story so that people will be more likely to see it. Um, or you can actually get really creative with your stories um, and make them really engaging and people will engage through your stories and that helps your post. It's kind of a cascade effect. So definitely if you're using Instagram as a nonprofit, make use of your stories. It's a huge mistake not to use your stories. Um, hashtags are really not as important as they used to be with Instagram. Um, that used to be how, uh, nonprofit, how Instagram found content. But when they were acquired by Facebook, they really were able to utilize some of that more sophisticated uh, content surfacing technology that Facebook has. So really, hashtags are still part of the game and you should use them, particularly the Giving Tuesday hashtag. Um, but you don't need to post 1 million hashtags on Instagram anymore more. Um, really, if you are posting good content and it's targeted to your audience, um, it will be able to surface it to people who are likely to be interested in your content. So you don't need to worry as much about making every other word hashtag. Um, Instagram is much better at actually finding content to recommend to users. So you don't need to have 8,000 hashtags on your Instagram posts, even though that used to sort of be the way things were done. So on Instagram, uh, they have a 
a competitor to TikTok called Reels, um, and they are really looking to get people on Instagram using Reels. And it's kind of the same thing. There's short video clips that you edit inside the app, and it actually rewards you by use, by use for using this product that they want you to use um, by giving you reach and making, more, making people able to find your Reels. So you don't have to, but it may be something worth trying if you're interested in getting more reach on Instagram or finding new followers on Instagram. Um, you don't have to, but you can always give Reels a try. They really want you to use Reels. Um, something that can be really helpful is scheduling a, a Giving Tuesday Instagram Live. Um, lives are pushed to the front of people's stories in the app, so they will be aware that you have gone live with someone. So you can do a lot of really cool things with it. Sometimes you can interview people, um, sort of lives where people talk to each other are really popular. People get in there and they join the conversation within the Instagram Live. Um, you can interview your staff members, talk to volunteers who are really awesome. Um, and you can even do a live Q&A just with you know, whoever is managing your social media. They can go on and just take questions from the audience and keep the conversation going that way. So that's really um, helpful if you want to use Instagram for Giving Tuesday. Um, and there's another example of a Canva template. They have really cute October and Halloween themed templates now. So I just wanted to share that one. It's adorable, but they have lots of great templates on Canva. Um, so there are really great tools. Going back to Canva, again, I highly recommend if you're using Instagram, utilize Canva. Again, it's free to nonprofits. You can get a pro account for free. Um, they have story templates, uh, post templates. They also have templates for other social media um, platforms as well, but I really love their Instagram templates in particular. Um, Linktree is a free service that you can use to create a directory of links. So that's been kind of one of the um, main challenges of Instagram is that you can't post a link in a post. You have to send people to your bio, but you can actually have a nice directory of your, your links that you want people to be able to access through Linktree. So that's totally free to use. And it's a really great way to keep track of the links so that you know if you have a Giving Tuesday post and then you post another link, if you just have the one link in your bio, that can disappear. But this way, you can have a nicely curated set of links for them. Um, and I would also recommend uh, making sure that your Instagram account is a business account. You do this in your settings, and you can connect that to your Facebook account, your Facebook business account, I should say. Um, and when you connect the two, you can sort of get more bang for your buck when you're planning ads and scheduling. Um, you can advertise on Facebook and Instagram at once. You can cross post stories. So if you're using both Facebook and Instagram, it's definitely worth A, having a business account because you'll get more analytics um, and also connecting your Facebook business account to your Instagram account so that you can take advantage of the fact that you have one central place where you can advertise on both platforms. Um, Twitter best practices. Um, so visual content on Twitter is a really great way to get past that 280 character limit. Um, you can also use uh, you know, photos for that um, and also threads. A lot of uh, people on Twitter, they have these long threads and you just do like one of 20 and you talk about whatever you wanna talk about. Um, Twitter is really not a platform for talking at people. It is a place for interaction. That's what it was designed to do. Um, so you really wanna focus on inspiring conversation, joining in on existing conversations, conversations, tagging other accounts. Um, and if really, if you're going to spend time on Twitter, uh, really optimize it for interaction, because if you're just posting into the void, you're not really going to get your, your money's worth or your efforts worth out of using Twitter. Um, using TweetDeck is a really great way to um, schedule your posts. You can schedule posts there. You can also manage uh, your posts. You can manage interactions with users. So if you're using Twitter, I definitely recommend checking out TweetDeck. That is a free product from Twitter, and it'll help you schedule things ahead of time and keep track of who's using the Giving Tuesday hashtag. It goes crazy fast on <laughs> Giving Tuesday, um, but you can check that out, and you can also keep track of what's happening in there and keep track of people who are interacting with you. So when somebody uh, tweets at you, you'll be able to see it in TweetDeck and you won't have to actually like go anywhere in particular within Twitter to see that and respond. Um, hashtags are still important on Twitter. Um, they're, you know, still the primary way that people connect conversations. You just want to be careful about getting in on any trending hashtags. Um, Giving Tuesday will most likely be trending on Giving Tuesday, but anything outside of that, just make sure you understand the context of the hashtag before you jump on any trends.
because nobody wants to be Twitter, Twitter's villain of the day. So a quick Twitter tip, um, we do actually have a way to generate a short Twitter friendly link that's right on your profile on Mighty Cause. Um, when you go to share on your organization profile and choose Twitter, it'll actually generate a Mighty Cause uh, link for you that we are tracking and it'll tag your account if you've set that up in your social sharing settings. Um, and so if somebody shares from your organization profile, you'll be able to get a notification that somebody directed people to your, your page on Mighty Cause, which is really cool. Um, and it also eliminates the, the need for you to go into like Bitly and create a shorter link. You don't have to do that anymore. We can do it for you right on Mighty Cause. So LinkedIn is actually something that is coming into uh, vogue as far as advertising goes. And that's because a lot of nonprofit professionals are on LinkedIn. Um, so think about using LinkedIn. If you don't have an organization profile on LinkedIn, it's a great time to create one. Uh, you have a built-in audience there, meaning your board and your staff members and your volunteers. So uh, it's really easy to build a presence there because you have people hopefully already built into your organization who can uh, like your page and follow it on LinkedIn. Um, and one thing that uh, LinkedIn in particular is really great at is um, engaging your board of directors and your staff. Um, because technically speaking, when they are the board of on your board at your nonprofit or where they're working for your nonprofit, these are professional events for them. These are professional accomplishments and exciting things that they may, may want to share with the people that they have on LinkedIn. Um, so, if, you know, get your board involved, ask them to just share a link to your Giving Tuesday uh, page when you're when they're on LinkedIn, um, definitely director level staff and any C-suite level staff, uh, make sure that they are on LinkedIn because those folks tend to have the larger uh, networks on LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, just have them, you know, ask them, hey, can you post a link and let everybody in your network know about our Giving Tuesday campaign? And most people are more than happy to do that because it's a simple ask. Um, and then another thing that you can do when you have an organization or a company profile on LinkedIn is there's a little button that you can click. Um, it's the three dots. And what you have the option to actually notify your employees when you create a new post. So that's a really great way to get some of that engagement. Um, you can click that and anybody who is currently an employee of your organization will receive a notification that they should go to your posts and interact with it. And that's a really great way to pick up traction on LinkedIn. So I don't want to spend a, a bunch of other time, a bunch of time on other platforms. Um, really, what I recommend is going where your audience is for Giving Tuesday. So um, wherever your audience is right now, I recommend meeting them in that place and focusing on the, that platform or those platforms. Um, so yeah, invest your effort where it'll, it, where it's likely to count. Um, but TikTok is one that we get questions a lot about at Mighty Cause. Um, and unfortunately, TikTok is really fantastic for uh, creating content and videos. You can do that right in the app. Um, but it's not really a place where you can easily provide a call to action. Um, so it's, it's a little tricky to actually use on Giving Tuesday, but certainly from a content creation standpoint, it can be helpful if you're comfortable using TikTok or have someone at your organization who is. Um, you can certainly create TikToks and share them to other platforms since TikTok itself is not super well set up to uh, direct people to a link where they can donate. Um, and I would really just say, try not to stress about using every single platform. Don't worry about casting a wide net by posting in as many places as possible. You really wanna focus on providing high quality content where your audience is. Um, and certainly you can do some audience building in advance of Giving Tuesday if you wanna build a presence on other platforms. Um, but the platforms that we talked about today are really the main ones where you will be connecting with people for Giving Tuesday. Um, you may find a fantastic way to use Reddit, but I haven't met many nonprofits that have, so you don't need to worry about it. Just stay where your audience is and meet them where they are. So one thing I did want to let you guys know is that we are having a webinar on October 28th um, that is all about storytelling. So if you're wondering, okay, well, what is the uh, way that I would tell a story in a Facebook post, how does that work? We're going to be covering that in the storytelling webinar. We're also going to be talking about the different types of stories, the elements of a good fundraising story. So if you're kind of curious about some of the particulars, like how you would put these different elements together, I highly recommend checking out the storytelling webinar. I will be hosting that one myself. And you can actually register for that on givingtuesday.mightycause.com under trainings, um, under resources. So take a 
a look there and make sure that you're registered for that one if you would like some more information about how to tell these stories on social media and elsewhere to get people engaged in your Giving Tuesday campaign. All right, so I wanted to make some time for questions. It looks like there's been quite a bit of um, movement in the chat, so I'll start with the Q&A box. Um, there's a question from Lucille, which is, can we get a link to the video webinar? And absolutely, yes, I will make sure that you are all emailed um, the link to this webinar, and you'll also get a, a link to the slides if you're one of those people who likes to have a slide deck. Um, this is a question uh, from Antoinette. Uh, what is the way to notify our team on LinkedIn again when we post? So yeah, like if you go to your company page and you've posted to your company page, on the right side of the post, if you're a page manager, um, is a, a met, it's basically uh, three dots, three vertical dots. And that's kind of the universal symbol on the internet for there's more information here, more options here. So you click that and there's a little bell that allows you to notify your employees. So of course, it may not work if you don't have your company page set up. Um, but if you already have employees and they're connected to your company or your organization on LinkedIn, it should send them a notification that just lets them know that you posted. Um, and just you may want to give them a heads up in an email like, hey, we're going to use this feature. If you see a notification, please go to our company profile and like the post or leave a comment. So that's how you would do that. It's on the right side of the actual posts itself. Um, OK, so we've got some questions coming in. Um, this one is from Claudia uh, with Facebook having its own donation platform, will they push down calls to donations on other platforms like Georgia Gives and Mighty Cause? So I don't have a definite like yes or no to that, but the realistic answer is probably in the same way that Facebook doesn't want you going to YouTube because YouTube is owned by Google. It wants you to stay within the app. So definitely it's probably not going to privilege your post linking to someone else, because um, if you've posted YouTube links, you've probably noticed that the reach is, is lower for those posts, because it doesn't want you to go outside the app. That is not Facebook's MO. That is not their goal. They want you, if you are doing something in on the internet, period, no matter what it is, whether you're buying shoes, making a charitable donation, um, talking to your grandma, they want you to be doing it on Facebook. So that is Facebook's goal. So that is something to be aware of, um, that link posts, uh, like especially with straight links, may not do well. So you want to think about ways that you can make the content engaging. You don't want to not include a, a link to your 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 profile so that they can make a donation, but you know, making sure that those other elements are there so that you can get that engagement and sort of combat the fact that Facebook never wants you to leave the app. If Facebook had its way, you would live your entire life on Facebook. So I don't have like a concrete, yes, their algorithm will punish you for linking outside of Facebook, but just anecdotally, if you are posting links to things that take you outside and you're not paying for it, they don't want you to do that. They want to keep each user in the app. So yeah, that's another case for boosting your key posts. So if you're giving them money, they're going to be a little bit more amenable to showing your posts to other people. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's something that's been reported. And unfortunately, that's just because uh, sending people to Mighty Cause to make a donation is not in line with Facebook's goals for itself and its revenue for, you know, the company. So you may see some of that, but you can overcome that with A, boosted posts, or and also B, making sure that your content is good and you're not just posting straight links and that you're posting other content that gets people um, excited and engaging in your content. Um, okay, so there's another question. Uh, will Giving Tuesday have leaderboards? If so, how will they work? Uh, yes, 100%, we will have leaderboards. Um, as for what, how they will be organized, stay tuned. We're going to have an announcement about that soon. Um, we haven't quite finalized the prize structure yet, um, but usually we do make sure, just to let everybody on this call know, we make sure that small nonprofits have a chance to win prizes. So that is one of the ways that we structure our event so that if you are a small nonprofit, we want you to be able to compete to win prizes so that just, you know, 
you just because of your size, you don't have an option to win prizes. That's usually what happens on Facebook, unfortunately, um, is that the big nonprofits kind of take home all the cash and they already have the cash to begin with. We want to give a chance to small nonprofits to really compete and take home some money for their organization. So that's one of the things that will be built into the event. But as for the exact uh, leaderboard structure and prize schedule, that is forthcoming very soon. Um, let's see. There's a question from Benjamin. Um, what strategy would you suggest to keep posting content consistently if we don't have someone in charge of social media because of limitations in staff? Um, so what I would recommend is blocking out some time and using scheduling tools. Uh, so Facebook has publishing tools that you can use to um, automatically schedule posts that will go up whenever you tell it to on Facebook and I believe Instagram as well. Um, that's one of the benefits of connecting your accounts. It's not always the easiest because uh, business accounts on Facebook and, and Instagram are a little bit funky sometimes, but if you can connect those two accounts, you can use their scheduling tools. Um, and really, it just is a matter of blocking out like an hour of your time, if that, and just planning some content and putting it up on a schedule. So thinking through it, planning ahead and just blocking out a little bit of time if you have it, um, you know, 20 minutes here to schedule posts, 30 minutes there, that can be really helpful if you have, you know, staff limitations, which I totally understand. And we're a small company here at Mighty Cause, so we make use of those scheduling tools as well because we don't always have somebody to post something right when it's supposed to post. We have to be conscientious about how we use our time at Mighty Cause as well. So making use of those scheduling tools that are available and um, tools like Hootsuite and Buffer, um, you can uh, pay a short, a small price for those. And it really goes a long way in making sure that you're posting content consistently. And you can have a, a dashboard there where you're monitoring all of that. So really scheduling things ahead of time and just using a chunk of time to, you know, plan content and then schedule it is really what I would recommend if you don't have the ability to like post it live. Um, let's see. So I want to go through some of these chats. Um, I know there's quite a bit here. I love that you guys have used the chat. So let me just uh, take a look at what we've got. And we are going to, I'm going to send out the recording. So if you do need to leave, I completely understand. You will make sure, I will make sure that you have the recording. Um, thank you, Christy, for sending everybody the link to Canva for nonprofits. Uh, that's my biggest recommendation from this webinar. If you haven't already taken that away is use Canva. Um, let's see. Uh, this is an interesting comment from Jacqueline regarding the algorithm. One of the things I'm most concerned about on Giving Day is the frequency of posting. Online articles say that best practice is two to three posts per day. Are, are we really going to ruin our engagement levels if we are posting super frequently and receiving posts with less engagement? So that's a really fantastic question. Um, and I would say that honestly, the uh, best practices about how many times to post is sort of outdated, um, really, because nobody's going to see your post right when you post it for the most part, unless you are you and you posted it, um, or they are following your your accounts like a hawk, um, they're going to see it a little bit later. So those that, you know, it's consistent posting schedule, you don't necessarily need to keep up with that. If you post content and it is good, strong, optimized content, it will perform for you. I definitely, if you can also boost it on certain platforms, I recommend that. But when it comes to those kinds of best practices, they're almost like superstitions among marketers. Um, I would say posting regularly is good, but it is more important that you are posting good, thoughtful content that is built to engage your supporters rather than you know a magic number of times per day to post. Because on Facebook, if you post one amazing campaign video and it gets a ton of reach, you're going to do better than if you just are posting to, for the sake of posting. So I would say the rule of thumb that I have as a marketer is only post when you have something important to say. If you are posting just to post, people will know and they will not engage and it will hurt your, your reach in the long run. And post when, uh, post when it's advantageous to you. So if making two to three posts per day doesn't make sense for you because you don't have anything specific to tell everybody and you know that they're not going to see it on a particular schedule, then invest your money or in your time in making sure that you are posting good quality content that is designed to get eyeballs in front of it. So that is really the best advice I can give you any sort of like, you know, golden rules about how many times to post what 
what uh, what times of day to post, um, you know, that kind of thing, that kind of thing, what days to post. That's not really how it works anymore. Unfortunately, there was a time when it did matter what day and time you posted, but really, uh, you know, you don't need to worry as much about that. And I would just make sure that what you are posting is intentional and thoughtful and really is made to say something. Um, let's see. If we have a strong base of volunteers and alumni, can we circumvent some of the need to boost a post if we can mobilize them to post our end of year video content from their own accounts? For sure, that's a question from Karen. And yeah, that, that is the dream. So if you can get people to circulate your content, um, if you can get them to share your content, that is fantastic. And you should definitely encourage people to do that. And I would recommend trying to coordinate that ahead of time, send them an email and just say, hey, it's really important for us to be seen on social media for Giving Tuesday. We're going to be posting this. We would love if you could share it. Or here's a link to our YouTube or Vimeo or whatever so that you can post it straight to your account. I think that is a really great idea to sort of get what you need from people and get what, the reach you need on a lower budget. So I think that's fantastic. Um, let's see. Oh, there's a, a great question about how to like how long videos should be. It varies per platform. I would say don't make a video that's more than a minute because people won't watch it. Like they'll watch a minute if if that. Um, so they can be super short. Um, and there's a, a, a comment from Christy, like, I wish I had time to make videos. Um, if you can find half an hour, go to Canva that you can make a video on Canva. They have awesome templates that you can use. You do have time if you can carve out like 30 minutes to make a video. It doesn't have to be a Hollywood production. You can use still photos so you don't have to like pull in video clips. You can actually make a video from still photos. Um, and I would definitely recommend using Canva. Their tool is super easy to use and you can have a, a good video in 30 minutes. And I think that that time is worth making sure that you have 30 minutes, you can make a video because it is such a reusable piece of content and it's what social media platforms are looking for. So if you can find 30 minutes, I think you can have a video. Uh, Canva is the tool I recommend for that. You don't have to learn how to use anything else. Canva is more or less drag and drop and they have video templates. So um, if you can take a look at Canva and carve out just yeah, like a part of an hour to try to make a video, I guarantee you can make something that is perfectly good. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a good question from Mike. I think this is uh, in relation to the comment about asking questions of your audience. Um, can you provide an example of a question a nonprofit might ask? Um, so a lot of things that I've seen from nonprofits who are doing an awesome job is like a lot of, I follow a lot of animal shelters and animal rescues because that's my, my background. That's where I worked before I came to Mighty Cause. And they'll do things like, you know, guess this dog's breed, which is always fun people. And usually the, the lesson there is that nobody knows what breed any dog is in a shelter. Um, but what's this dog breed? Can you name this kitten? Um, those are things that you could ask, like, what's your favorite insert thing? Um, you can ask them, you know, basically things that are neutral. You want to stay away from anything that's like too politically charged or controversial, but just asking people what they think and, you know, their opinion, what they like. Um, those are things that can work really well. It kind of depends, like, what your nonprofit does, frankly. Um, so think about like what you do and how what, what you would ask a member of the public. What do you want to know? Um, because social media is really all about the user's identity. And so they love any opportunity that they can talk about themselves, um, which is really just human beings in general, in a nutshell. Um, so asking them about themselves to share something about themselves. Unfortunately, those posts that are going viral that get people to share all of their, you know, password <laughs> uh, secret questions, uh, those are using that tech Technique, but you want to use it for good. So just think of something that's neutral and fun to get people commenting, uh, sometimes nostalgia. Um, you know, do you remember X, Y, and Z? That gets people to comment for some reason. Um, but yeah, it kind of depends specifically on what you, what you do as an organization. Um, but getting people to share their thoughts and opinions and their favorite things, those, that's an easy way to get people um, interacting in the comments. So yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have a more specific answer. That's not an animal related thing because those are 
fairly easy. You can post a picture of a kitten and say, name this kitten. Um, but sometimes even caption this uh, photos, like if you have a, a sort of goofy photo and you want people to come up with a caption, that's something that I've seen be successful for nonprofits. Um, not necessarily as a main like giving day post, but more of a, a way to bolster your general engagement and reach. Um, let's see, as a question or a comment from Carol, you don't have to be fancy from videos. We love, st we started making fun compilation videos with Can Canva, love to see it and absolutely you don't need to be fancy, you don't need to be Spielberg. Um, you, you can be kind of scrappy and put together something uh, in Canva and that works just as well, frankly, as professionally produced uh, videos. Um, it's a question from Jacqueline. Do you know how many Instagram followers you need to use the swipe up link or access the new link option for stories. Uh, so I, it's 10,000 at this point. Um, I think the plan is eventually for everybody to have access to the ability to link. I've been hearing rumblings about that for a while and that would be amazing. But um, I think at this point, it's still 10,000, which is a lot of followers. Um, but hopefully in the near future, maybe not before Giving Tuesday, but in the next year or so, Everybody will have access, but at this point, unfortunately, it's 10,000 followers. Um, let's see. How do you get verified? Uh, there's a process on each platform. So if you just Google, you know, how do I get verified on Twitter? How do I get verified on Instagram? There's a process where you basically have to work with them to prove that you are who you say you are. And there are some parameters based on the platform. Like if you have two followers, you're not going to be verified because you need to be a, some sort of public figure or organization. Um, but yeah, you can just Google that and see what the specific, like if, depending on the platform, like what they're their criteria is because it's a little different depending on the platform. So let's see. Um, all right. Awesome. I'm sorry. I'm just scrolling through all of the conversation. I love, 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 love that you guys have made use of the, uh, the chat function. Um, any tips for posting stories? on Instagram from a desktop. This is from Tori. Um, it only lets me send information via messenger and not putting posts or shares on my stories. Unfortunately, you have to use the app on Instagram. Um, so you can easily just download the app and you can create a dummy account for yourself. That's something if you, like I understand that for some people having your personal Instagram and your work Instagram connected is a little too close for comfort. I don't personally love that myself um, because you know accidents happen. I've seen people make accident, like make posts to public accounts that they meant for their personal accounts. And it's like the worst thing in the world. Like it, nobody cares really, but it feels terrible. So I completely understand that. If that is something that's worrying you, I would recommend like creating a, a dummy Instagram account. Um, that's just for the purposes of connecting your work account to it um, and posting from the app. But unfortunately, you do need to do most of that within the app. Instagram is um, definitely an app. It is not a desktop friendly website. So for stories and for making posts, you do have to do that. Um, in the app, you can sort of kind of pre-schedule things for yourself by saving them as drafts, but that doesn't always work reliably. But yeah, unfortunately, you've got to use the app for Instagram. Um, and, but you can use Facebook publishing tools. That was a great comment um, in response to that. Um, you can use Facebook publishing tools. I don't believe it works for stories. Um, it's really designed to be mobile oriented. So um, you, you're going to have to use the app unless you're like scheduling something through Facebook's publishing tools. Um, but sometimes those can look a little funky. If you are posting something to Facebook and Instagram, you can usually kind of tell that they were meant for both because they're different platforms and they look different on those platforms. But um, Facebook publishing tools is a way to, to get around that, especially if you're paying money to advertise. Um, let's see. Um, oh, I'm sorry. And it's not even publishing tools anymore. It's Creator Studio because they updated that. So I apologize for using out of date terminology. Um, let's see. I think I think that might be it for questions. There's so much 
uh, great information and great conversation in the chat. Um, I really appreciate everybody spending so much time with me today. I look forward to seeing what you all do for Giving Tuesday. Um, if you have any questions for Mighty Cause, you can always reach out to me at my email address, Linda at MightyCause.com. You can reach out to our support team at support at MightyCause.com. And I will make sure that everybody on this uh, webinar has access to the recording and the slides. It'll be posted to the uh, Giving Tuesday website. Um, and thank you all so much. You've been like the best webinar audience. And I really appreciate you uh, spending more than an hour with me today. So goodbye and happy fundraising.